I'm going to show you how we can take this plain, ordinary pint glass and turn it into this really cool glass using Etch-All, the reusable glass etching cream. I'm Joe Rotella. Let me show you how it's done. So start by cutting a stencil out of Etch Mask self-adhesive vinyl. And I have one done here, ready to go. Then I've got my glass. I want to make sure that it's really clean. I like to, you know, wash them, wipe them down, and then I typically use a little alcohol wipe just to make sure that I don't have any oil or grease from my hands on the piece of glass. So we'll let that dry a second. Now we have to transfer this stencil onto the glass. Now some folks would weed it right here on the backing. Weeding, remember, means taking away the parts that we don't need, that we want to expose that glass to the cream. Another technique is to actually weed it right on the surface of the glass that you're etching. And I'm going to do that in this case because this particular piece has some very, very tiny dots in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get a piece of transfer sheet. So I've got one that I've started to cut a piece from. That'll work great in this case. And I'm going to cut it to fit this particular stencil. And these transfer sheets are reusable, so I'm going to get to use this over and over again. Now we need to take the transfer sheet off of the backing sheet. And we can do that with just a simple peel. Don't let it curl too much upon itself. Um, if it's a big piece, I'll, I'll take it off as I'm actually applying it. In this case, I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to just apply it right to my stencil. You can see I got that way crooked. So it peels up, no problem. I can go ahead and line it up a little bit more carefully there. And bear down on it really well. Burnish that right in. So what we have right now is kind of a sandwich. There's a piece of carrier sheet on the back. My vinyl is sandwiched in the middle. And then I have the transfer sheet on the top. And now what I want to do is take this vinyl off of the carrier sheet and get it to adhere to that transfer sheet. Now, you may have to nudge some pieces along as you go. I know this particular stencil pretty well. I've etched this glass many, many, many times with this shape. So it wouldn't bother me if pieces I know I don't need uh, don't stay with the, with the transfer sheet. But I'm going to just keep working it. You can see I'm kind of pressing it with my finger to nudge that piece of vinyl to go with the transfer sheet, to leave the backing sheet and go with the transfer sheet. Just take your time. Now that's the part I really care about is those tiny, tiny, oh, they're about an eighth of an inch wide pieces of vinyl that form the windows of this police box. And I want them to all go onto this transfer sheet. So make sure I have all my little pieces. There are ones here at the top that are even tinier. I bet they're a sixteenth of an inch max. So now I have my whole stencil on this transfer sheet. Now I can go ahead and apply it to my glass. So I'm going to work my way down the center and then over to the sides. Make sure it's burnished down really, really well. Now I can slowly take away the carrier sheet, or the transfer sheet, sorry. And you can see all my stencil is nicely adhered to my glass. Remember these transfer sheets we can reuse, so I'm going to go ahead and put it right back onto 
a backing or carrier sheet. So I have a whole little collection of these at different sizes that I just reuse over and over again. And I'm going to make sure this is really burnished down well. Now I need to weed my stencil. So I have a weeding tool here, a pick tool. It's got a sharp point, so keep that protective cover on there. And what I can do now is slowly take away the parts of the stencil that I don't want. This is where I'm going to expose the glass to the etching cream. Don't worry, you're not going to scratch your glass. So look at this, I can peel this up almost in one nice big row here. There's all the, believe it or not, medium size windows. And as I get to the very top part, look at those two very, very tiny windows. There you have it. It's all transferred and ready to go. It's burnished down really well. I'll use the fleshy part of my finger to make sure. Don't roll like this, because you might roll up that vinyl. Instead, just press. Now, we've got a curved surface here. It's We want to make sure this doesn't roll once the cream is on it. So I'm just going to use some painter's tape to adhere it right to my work surface. And the way I think of it, tape is pretty expensive, and I really want this to come out perfect. So I'm going to tape both the top and the bottom. I don't want any chance of bumping this table and having my piece roll at all. So that's pretty good. Now, I know the th cream that I'm working with is pretty thick, and it's unlikely to roll down the sides. But just in case, you know, better to be safe, I'm going to take this tape and put an edge of it right here, right along here, and then fold it up and tape it up. And you can see what we're making there is a little bit of a gutter, just like in the bowling alley, so that should the cream roll down, it'll get caught in that gutter and not go all the way down and touch any of my glass. But again, I'm pretty confident I've used this cream before, this particular bottle. I know it's a nice, thick batch. So I'm not really worried about it. You can make the gutters like I'm doing here with tape. If you have extra pieces of the yellow vinyl mask, you could just use that vinyl too. And I'm going to make sure that I have a nice amount of tape here, because that's a tiny little spot. I definitely don't want to hit that. So I have my etch-all etching cream here. Remember, this permanently etches glass, mirror, marble, slate. Um, it can take off ceramic glazes. <clears throat> this bottle I've had for a while, and we'll see once I get it open here, that my cream is a really dark chocolate color. Now, sometimes you'll get a bottle of this, and it'll be a beautiful cream color, just like evaporated milk almost. Um, the color doesn't mean it's not usable. It depends on its exposure to different temperatures, whether or not it changes color. So this is perfectly usable. In fact, I've had a bottle for about five years that I still keep using. That's the beauty of etch-all, is it's fully reusable. Now, some folks would pour this right on the surface and then spread it around. That makes me, personally, a little bit nervous I like putting it on by hand with a plastic spoon. I feel I have a little bit more control of where this is going. And I just want to make sure that I put a nice amount and that I cover any bit of that exposed glass. And again, we want to be careful. If you have a watch on, make sure that you're not getting near the face of your watch, because it'll etch the face of that watch. You've got a ring. You think it's a diamond, but maybe you're not quite sure. If it's glass, I wouldn't get it near this cream. So I usually tell folks, jewelry, 
watches. Let's take all that off, put that aside, so there's no risk of anything happening to it while we have our cream out. And that's it. So we have a nice coating on there. Not too thick, not too thin. Doesn't look like it's going to run at all, which is great. I'm going to set a timer now for 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and take it off. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. So it's been 15 minutes and now I'm ready to take the cream off. That's really one of the beautiful parts of etch all etching cream is it's reusable. So I'm going to just take this cream and reclaim it right back into my jar. So I'm using the spatula tool to just lift off the cream and put it right back in the jar. Now be careful when you're doing this. You can see I have a big lump here on that spatula. You want to make sure that you're not going to you know, have it drop off on a piece of glass that you don't want etched. That would be disappointing. So I'm just claiming it. I don't want to go so hard with the spatula that I force cream under the stencil. I really just want to reclaim though as much as possible because again fully reusable so the more I reclaim the more I'll have for future projects. And there we have it. So now we're ready to clean the glass. Now this is important. Make sure you have nothing on your fingers because we're going to be touching the glass. I'm going to take it off of the table here, but I'm leaving all the tape, the stencil, everything on. And let's just set that here for one sec. You can wash this off in the sink. Make sure it's not a porcelain sink. I'm just going to use a basin here and fill it with a bit of water. I've got a sponge, my sleeves are rolled up, I'm ready to go. So let's get this sponge good and soft, wet. Now I'm going to put the whole jar, the whole glass, right in the water and wash it off. And I'm giving it a pretty aggressive scrub here. I want to make sure there is no cream on that glass. And that looks pretty good. Now I can take off all the tape and the stencil. Again, make sure no cream anywhere. We're good to go. So there's my start of my stencil. And now I'll just go ahead and take off all these little squares. So I've got all the vinyl off. I'm going to give it another quick wash. Let's move our basin. Etching doesn't show up really well when it's wet. So you're not going to get that wow factor until the glass is dry. But now that the glass is nice and dry, let's see if you can see our police box. A little bit hard to see in the lighting. I think once I give you a front-facing view, you'll notice it. But it's perfect. <laughs> 